All my bracing is hand split stock that I uh, split myself. I like to use Sitka spruce because of its stiffness. Uh, I make sure when I'm hand planing it down that the bar remains perfectly straight with the grain running perpendicular uh, along its whole length. I then divide it into equal parts so that visually I can control where the high spots are. I quickly take a bench chisel and roughly fit it. Uh, switch to a small little plane and get it really close. You can do a lot with just a hand plane and your eyes. I uh, keep going, kind of rock it back and forth, feeling where the high and low points are, if one side is higher than the other, slowly getting the ends down to meet the center. I want to control the angle of the brace, um, where it lies on uh, the top. When it's pretty close, I use a, a fine chalk. Uh, here I'm, I'm rocking it back and forth, uh, seeing where the high points are, as well as using the chalk as a reference uh, to show me where the, the bumps are. I go with small finger planes at this point to remove a lot, and as I continue, I use more precise tools, so I finish with a scraper, removing all of the high bumps. Now here you can see me rolling the bar back and forth. I'm feeling how it rolls back and forth. I'm feeling the amount of spring. Uh, I want this to be a smooth transition from the back to front without rocking over itself. If it rocks, you know that one side is higher than the other and there's a bump. Uh, at this point, all the chalk should be uniform across the whole bar and you're getting ready for gluing. So at this point you remove all of the chalk and the dust and do a good dry fit to make sure that it fits well before you glue it. Just with two clamps is good enough. Then apply the glue. Um, you don't want to use a lot. If you oversaturate the wood you risk showing uh, the bar through the top on the other side. The thing you want to make sure here is you don't want the bar to twist as you're gluing it. Um, you want it to stay in the angle that you fit it to. And you want the clamping pressure to be even across the whole bar. At this point, uh, go in there with, uh, I use a small bent ruler and a damp rag and clean up all of the glue squeeze up. It's much easier to do this now than uh, later on after it dries and you're trying to profile the base bar. Here you can also see the cradle that I used to hold the top through the whole process. This keeps the top uh, completely secured. Uh, it doesn't bend or, or twist while I'm fitting the bar or gluing it. When you profile the bar, um, I use a set of dimensions that I use uh, through all my uh, bracing. Sometimes I change it up a little bit depending on the stiffness of the brace and the top. Um, and this is just the same dimensions I use for my cellos and violin work. Um, everything is done visually. Um, the higher the brace, the more narrow it can be. And you want the braces to be round and as it gets higher to form more of a bullet shape. Here I'm just kind of testing the feel of the top, its response, how it feels to the touch of my hands. And the last thing, to just make it visually nice, take out all the bumps. And I like to feel the braces uh, all the way across. Finally I take a sharp knife and profile the ends. Uh, so that it just doesn't end abruptly. It's a nice uh, cut finish. You can also check the roundness of your brace, as you can see there. Thanks for watching, and please check my blog for more information.